the thing is that everything's connected. Um, we're talking about a vast web, and the strands of the web represent different organizations, different areas of society, but in the end, they all answer to the spider. This is how the coordination happens. And so the Church of Rome is just the Church of Babylon relocated. You know, the trinity of Babylon of um, Nimrod, the father, and uh, Ninos, Tamos, the son, the virgin-born son, and um, Samiramis, the virgin mother. That Babylonian trinity, when the the bloodlines of Babylon eventually moved into Rome, became Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, uh, Holy Spirit. And, of course, the Holy Spirit is, uh, is um, symbolized by Christianity as a dove. That was the symbol of Queen Semiramis in Babylon. Um, and this religion um, has a satanic face, which is hidden, and it has a public face, which still looks satanic to me, but um, is officially, uh, you know, a, a God-fearing religion. And so you have, for instance, the Eucharist, where they drink the blood as wine and eat the bread as, as flesh of Jesus. But in the inner circles of the same uh, networks, they literally do it, um, eating flesh and drinking blood um, and you know you see this the symbolism all over the place when you travel through the world I've just come back from Washington DC Washington DC is in the district of Columbia Columbia comes from a Latin root word meaning dove and Columbia is one of the names for this goddess figure um, and we um, are looking, therefore, at a unbroken stream of psychopathic, satanic um, bloodlines and their gophers moving through history and gathering more and more power by centralizing more and more power. This is why, you know, we've seen this incessant centralization of power from uh, living in tribes, to tribes coming together to form nations, to now nations coming together to form things like the European Union. And the more you centralize, globalization is another name for it, uh, of course, the fewer people control more and more people. This is what centralization of power is all about. And so this stream of manipulation and bloodline families and their gophers have, have grasped more and more control of the world as where the world is controlled from becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. This is why in the end they want a world government dictating to um, every man, woman and child um, on the planet. Um, this web, um, well, it, it is a symbol, but it, it's virtually literal the way it works, um, starts to answer some, well, endless questions of how things that appear unconnected are um, are not connected are, are connected so um, you have this um, this elite uh, bloodline network that has since ancient history uh, been involved in human sacrifice and child abuse and sexual abuse of children um, and you've got a strand in the web um, in politics, and you see the, the the extent of pedophilia at the highest levels of politics, um, you see it in um, all areas of society. And where else do you see it? On a global industrial scale, you see it in the Roman church, because the Roman church is part of this web, this political level that where the pedophilia happens is part of this web. So you see the um, recurring themes through people and organizations that don't seem on the surface to be connected at all, but the same things are going on. And uh, another interesting point is that um, Zionism has the goal of rebuilding Solomon's temple 
on what they call Temple Mount, where the big mosque is now in Jerusalem. And that's where we're heading very fast, by the way. This moving the American embassy to uh, Jerusalem and the uh, targeting and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians in East Jerusalem um, is all uh, the stepping stones towards replacing the mosque in Jerusalem with um, the Alaska Mosque with um, a rebuilt Solomon's Temple um, because this Israel Webb owns Donald Trump quite demonstrably. I mean, the, the, um, uh, the um, ambassador, the U.S. ambassador to Israel, actually the you know, um, Israel ambassador to the U.S., really, this guy Friedman used to work for the Trump organization, bankruptcy lawyer, the guy he's got um, in charge of his international negotiations, including that between Israel and the Palestinians, is um, um, Jason Greenblatt, uh, who um, used to work for the Trump organization. You look at Trump's uh, senior advisor, his uh, son-in-law, Yared Kushner, been a, um, a friend of uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu his entire life because him and his uh, Kushner's father were uh, together. So you, you see this. But another strand in the web is the Knights Templar. Very, very ancient secret society which uh, controls the city of London financial districts, etc., uh, etc. Et and the Knights Templar have had, since they were established in the 12th century, the goal of rebuilding Solomon's Temple on the site of Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And people would look at the Knights Templar, they wouldn't make any connection to Zionism, but the same web has the same goal. And so when you have this, this web at work, and part of the web is attached to the American government, part of the web is attached to the US, uh, the uh, British government and the European Union governments, and another um, part of the web is attached to the Israeli government, this is why a country of 8 million people on a sliver of land in the Middle East, has so much influence, so much um, control of events, and um, dictates so much, because it's, it's all the web working as one. This is how it, it works. And one of the themes that you pick up when you go into the rabbit hole of this web, and the individual rabbit holes of politicians and, and church and, and, and social services is you find the same things. You find uh, satanic activity, literally ritual satanic activity, and you find abuse of children, child trafficking, um, and so on. And you know, um, how many children have gone missing? Well, I, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I was trying to help someone in America many years ago who'd had their children taken away um, uh, by the state and given to people the state wanted the children to be with. And um, it led to me calling the federal government in America to ask how many children went missing in America every year. They couldn't tell me. They didn't keep the figures, they said. Um, they could tell me how many cars went missing, but not... Um, but not children. They said I would have to ring um, the state government in every state to, um, to find out that number. So I started ringing them. And I got to about 10, and the figure was absolutely enormous. People don't realize they, 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 they equate missing children stories on the television um, or in the paper with the number of children that go missing. They're just the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest fraction. Um, and of course, there will be um, explanations for many uh, of those children going missing, but not for a phenomenal number of them there won't. 
And when you look at all these children now uh, in these, um, this mass movement of migrants, how many of them will never be seen again? And it's something else that I found literally all over the world. And that is children going missing. And they, they go into these networks. Well, a lot of them, a lot of them go into these networks. And, you know, um, it even comes down to something that, that they call in Satanism breeders, where they actually breed children in captivity for abuse and for um, sacrifice including fetuses, aborted fetuses. I mean, this is what we're dealing with. Uh, these people are running uh, your world, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and because they're born literally in captivity, then these children never appear on any government document. They have no birth certificates. No one even knows they exist in the system. And this is happening all over the world. And you see, when you see the the major trait of psychopaths um, there's something called the hair test named after the guy who came up with a list of personality traits and if you have enough of them you are considered a psychopath and um, right at the top is lack of empathy um, the inability to put yourself in the feelings and experience of the ones you're making suffer now, to do what this psychopathic network does to people, to children, to Palestinians, to, to starving people, to people asle uh, sleeping in the street, you have to have, as a foundation trait, the inability to experience empathy. Because if you don't have any emotional consequence for what you do, then there's no limit to what you will do. And this is the mentality we're dealing with. Everything and everyone, including their people in their own network, is expendable to the outcome. And the outcome is mass human control. Uh, eventually by artificial intelligence, which of course is taking over more and more um, all the time. These um, office assistants, which DARPA helped to give to the world, thanks very much, must have had a break from death rays, did you that day? Um, are a psychological tool for fusing a psychological connection between humans and artificial intelligence so that the two basically fuse together because if you're going to um, connect something quote physically which is the idea through microchips and what have you um, then first you need to make the psychological connection and that's what these office assistants and things like that are all about that's why DARPA funded them